Okay guys, today what I want to do is I want to cover the basic structure and function of a neuron. The neuron is the functional unit of the nervous system. So this is what allows you to create thoughts, you know, sing a song, not read the textbook. These neurons create electrical impulses that are then converted into chemical signals. So one of the things that you're going to have to become familiar with is this, um, not that, um, this idea of um, a neural transmitter. So what a neuron does by definition is it will create an electrical impulse and it will travel down this little strip. I'll be more specific in a minute. And then on the end of this little thing that appears to be a wire on these little knobs here, the axon terminal. This is where you store the neurotransmitter. So when the electrical impulse travels down, it's going to cause the release of that neurotransmitter. And that's going to that neurotransmitter is then going to allow it to signal another neuron or a cell of the body. So let's talk about that too. So neurons can communicate they can communicate with um, other neurons or and they can communicate with cells of the body. So what I want to do in this little video is just give you the basic structure and function of each part of the neuron. So let's start here with the cell body. So this area right here is the cell body. And the cell body is basically just like other cells of your body. Hey, it's kind of funny. Anyways, um, it has a cell membrane. It's got a nucleus which contains DNA. And we know that DNA codes for proteins. It's got a rough endoplasm reticulum. It's got mitochondria, the whole nine yards, right? So in this case, being that this is a general class, the function of the cell body in terms of the neuron the function of that cell body is to make neurotransmitters you're not going to believe this but most neurotransmitters are protein that's why it's got a very well-developed rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and you know that the rough endoplasmic reticulum is where you build protein. And neurotransmitters are proteins. So that's really the primary function of the cell body. Now, as you can see, the cell body has these extensions. These are referred to as dendrites. And dendrites, their function is to collect neural information. So they will receive chemical information from another neuron, and they will receive it and then the cell body 
produces, begins to produce an electrical impulse. Now, there's an area in the cell body called the axon hillock. And the axon hillock actually kind of is a decision maker there. Now, watch. Many nerves can communicate. Many neurons can communicate with a single neuron, right? And some of these impulses from these neurons are going to tell the cell body to produce an electrical impulse, and then some of them are going to tell the neuron to not produce an electrical impulse. So what the axon hillock does is it adds up all the neural input. Some neural input is going to say, okay, dude, fire. Other neural input is going to say, okay, dude, not fire. And tons and tons of neurons can stimulate a single neuron cell body. But it's the axon hillock that's going to say, look, based on all the information I'm receiving, I'm going to either fire or I'm not. And in a large, to a large uh, degree, neurons, your brain, your nervous system works like a computer. It works on ones and zeros. The neuron either fires or it doesn't. And based on whether that neuron fires and then the collection of all the neural activity within your brain, that determines what's going on. Now, so let's say, for example, that all the neural impulses say to the axon hillock, okay, buddy, fire. What you're going to do is the axon hillock is going to say, okay, create an electrical impulse. And it's going to travel down the axon. So the axon transmits the neural information. And it transmits the neural information from the cell body down to the axon terminal. Terminal is end, right? So at the end. Now, in many axons, especially motor nerves, the axon is insulated with this stuff called myelin. The myelin sheath, what it does is it insulates particular spots along the axon. And as you can see, there are some bare spots here. See these little bare spots? Those bare spots are called nodes of Ranvier. So the myelin sheath insulates. It's like a little fatty layer that goes around it around the axon, but it leaves some bare spots. And those bare spots are called nodes of Ranvier. And it is in these bare spots that the electrical impulse is actually produced. And we learned in the first couple weeks of class that these electrical impulses are produced by electrolytes. And I'll explain more about that later. But when the impulse is sent from the cell body, it will bypass these insulated areas, these myelin sheath areas, and appear to go from bare spot to bare spot. So it looks like the electrical impulse is jumping from one spot to the next. And that is called salutary conduction. So basically, what this does is is it speeds up how fast that electrical impulse travels down this axon. And that's a good thing. By doing this, the electrical impulses that are sent from your brain, spinal cord, to your muscles to run or fight for your life is speeded up by, you know, a factor of 100. 
so that you're not sitting there waiting for the brontosaurus to eat you you can get up and run you may have heard of a disease called multiple sclerosis where the myelin sheath in the brain and spinal cord and even in the peripheral nervous system is destroyed by your own immune system and when that myelin sheath is destroyed the ability of that nerve to transmit an electrical impulse onto your muscles is impaired and that's why you get muscular weakness so those are the basic structures of the neuron now what I want to do is I want to show you kind of a blown up picture of this area here the axon terminal and I'm going to try to draw it so I can simplify it now remember that the primary function of the cell body is to produce these neurotransmitters and when these neurotransmitters are produced what they do is they will travel Oops. Hang on. they will travel through the cytoplasm of the axon and they will get stored in the axon terminal so they're made in the cell body and then those chemicals those neurotransmitters are then stored in the axon terminal so what I'm going to um, try to describe for you now is what's called a synapse so a synapse is where a nerve and a nerve another nerve meet to communicate or a nerve in a cell meet to communicate so if we draw this here and I'll label these structures All right, so what you have is the axon and then you have the axon knob and within the axon knob this is where you store all of your neurotransmitters now that neurotransmitter is stored but the only way it can be released is if an electrical impulse travels over that axon knob and when it does that it is going to cause the release of this neurotransmitter from that axon knob now remember and this is very important nerves do not touch other nerves meaning the axon knob doesn't come in contact directly with a nerve or a cell of the body how it communicates is by the axon creating an electrical impulse and then causing that release of that neurotransmitter so what you have here now is the we'll call this the dendrite so what does the dendrite do excuse me the dendrite collects neural information well how does it collect it well it collects it because you're not going to believe this but embedded in the membrane of the dendrite are neurotransmitter receptors so the axon transmits the electrical impulse down to the end of the synaptic knob so you got the electrical impulse traveling over it 
And when the electrical impulse travels over it, the axon knob, it's going to cause the release of that neurotransmitter through the process of exocytosis. Can you believe that? Now, in order for this neuron here, this guy right here, to influence this neuron here, that neurotransmitter has to bind to that neurotransmitter receptor. And when that neurotransmitter binds to that neurotransmitter receptor, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to cause this neuron right here to produce an electrical impulse, or it's going to say, hey, buddy, don't produce an electrical impulse. So this is how neurons communicate with one another. Now look, as long as that neurotransmitter is bound to the that receptor, it's and let's say this is the case that it's going to cause that nerve to produce an electrical impulse. That nerve will continue to produce an electrical impulse. So you don't always want that to happen. You want to be able to control neural activity. So one of the things that happens is that neurotransmitter is then actually removed from the neurotransmitter receptor and then re-uptaked it back into the axon knob. I don't know why that went away, but it did. So it's going to be re-uptaked it did. And that's one of the waves. The other way is that an enzyme floating out in the cytoplasm can actually eat that neurotransmitter off. But regardless, as long as that neurotransmitter is bound to that receptor, it's either going to tell that neuron to create an electrical impulse or not. In this case, I'm going to tell you that when that neurotransmitter is bound there, it's going to cause this neuron to create an electrical impulse. So how you control nervous activity is by determining which of these neurons are going to fire and then removing that neurotransmitter from that neurotransmitter receptor. Now, let's do this real quick. And again, sometimes it just comes down to understanding some terminology, right? All right, so what I'm telling you here is that this is the axon of a neuron. And we just learned that axons transmit neural information. And how do they transmit that neural information? The cell body creates an electrical impulse and it travels down the axon from bare spot to bare spot on the nodes of RANVA and then stored in the axon knob is that neurotransmitter, right? Now, this is important. Oops. So, the axon, when it communicates with another neuron, it's referred to as the pre synaptic membrane. So the presynaptic membrane always releases the neurotransmitter. So when the electrical impulse travels, that neurotransmitter is going to be released through the process of exocytosis into this area here. So there's separation between the axon and in this case, the dendrite and the dendrite collects the neural information. So the little separation between the presynaptic membrane and the dendrite is called the 
synaptic cleft or trough. Then you have the dendrite. So the dendrite, remember, in order for that neurotransmitter to exert its effect, it's got to bind to those neurotransmitter receptors, right? So the dendrite in this case is the postsynaptic membrane. So the postsynaptic membrane will have embedded in their cell membrane the neurotransmitter receptors. So this is the basic structure of a neuron and then the function of each part. And then in a very rudimentary way, I explain to you how neurons are able to communicate with other neurons. Now, 